Call 1-877-876-9749. one 876 9749 Tiger Woods, the world's most valuable athlete, tried today to take the first steps towards repairing his tattered reputation. The very carefully orchestrated TV appearance at which even his breathing seemed to be staged. Tiger apologized to his family, his colleagues, his friends, and of course his fans and his sponsors. He also hinted that he may return to golf this year. He didn't take any questions. He was not accompanied by his wife. We'll score what that means in a moment. So how did Tiger do? Here to score his performance, we have Rick Cerrone, who as director of media relations for the Yankees, the New York Yankees, helped orchestrate Jason Giambi's extraordinary comeback from a steroid scandal. Laura Reese, president of Reese & Reese, a marketing strategy firm. And Tanya Ryman, author of the book, the power of body language. Good to see you all here. So, Rick, first to you. Yes, How would you rate his performance today? Well, I think, first of all, he overcame a very bad environment. I mean, that set was, if, if I had staged a press conference that looked like that for George Steinbrenner, I would have been on the street the next day. Um, I think he gave things that people maybe didn't expect. I mean, he took accountability, he took responsibility, he was forthright. Where I think he went off track is when he brought in the media. And I had said much earlier, and I would have counseled he this. For those who didn't see, he criticized the media uh, very specifically. Didn't uh, need to do that. This was not the form for that. If you, if you just took that out of the text, if his PR analyst said, you know what, don't go there right now, I, I think he would have landed on the green, so to speak. But the bottom line, David, is he can move on from this. He's going to go back into rehab, which I think is terrific. He's put golf on the back burner. Uh, I think he's going to be fine. Would you rate it? Would you rate his job today? That sounds like you're talking about a C minus here. Yeah, that's probably where I'd be. Absolutely. All right, All right. which might be good enough. Let's talk. Let's show a clip and then get your response to it. He did, he, as I mentioned, he wasn't accompanied by his wife Elin, but he did talk about her. Let's play the clip and then get the response. Elin and I have started the process of discussing the damage caused by my behavior. As Elin pointed out to me, my real apology to her will not come in the form of words. It will come from my behavior over time. Tanya, sincere? Credible. I don't know about sincere. The reason I say that is because he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's making eye contact with the public, and he's looking down at the appropriate moments. It was just way too monotonous. You know what it seemed to me? You say appropriate moments. It seemed too appropriate. Staged, Everything right. was yes. so staged. Yeah. I mentioned in the intro, even yes. the breathing. Yes, right. There were times when... He sighed as, as, as though on cue. Yeah. It was just a little too monotonous. I would have expected at this point to see him a little bit more emotive. He's talking about, you know, things he's didn't, done wrong. I would like to see him be more apologetic, more emotional there. Okay. He also talked about his brand, his personality, uh, the question of whether that would be affected by all this in terms of being a role model. Let's play the clip and then go to Laura. Parents used to point to me as a role model for their kids. I owe all those families a special apology. I want to say to them that I am truly sorry. All right, Laura, this gets to his branding quality, the quality of the wow. Tiger brand. Do you think he made the first That's step right. in correcting that? Absolutely. He made a great first step. It's a baby step. And again, it's words, not actions. Actions are what's really important here. But the words in this statement were really wonderful. He hit all the right points. I think the, the part about the children and being a role model was really powerful stuff. The problem was, as Tanya talked about, the delivery was t terrible. Mm. I mean, obviously, he had some of the best advisors in the business, and he is obviously not a very good public speaker. Probably why politicians are easier to get themselves out of these things because they are such good speakers. Tiger could have used a little right. more well, work here's, in the speaking Here's department. one advisor he didn't have. Rick Cerrone, you weren't crazy about this at all. Well, you know, it didn't look good. You know, it, it sounded like one of those hostages. It looked like a hostage in the Middle East, you know, That's reading right. his thing. That's I mean, right. it was the, the, the technical quality of it, the lighting, the backdrop, everything. It didn't make him look good. But the bottom line, David, though, is that there was three things here. There's number one, his family, right. which he's trying to put back together. Golf, he's going to get back on the golf course eventually. The rest of his business and the sponsors, 
That may never come back. By the way, you're forcing me to ask you, what would you have done different about the backdrop and just the physical area that he inhabited? Oh, I would have had a much different backdrop, maybe an open room or something. But when you look at this shot from behind that they were forced to go to when the camera broke down, I'm not trying to be funny here, but it looked like a sketch from Saturday Night Live with a, a, a cheap podium, <laughs> the, the, the actor, and three rows of, yeah. of people. Yeah, but it all, it, it all does come back to character and delivery, yes. doesn't it? Yes, it absolutely does. And one of the things, when we're talking about how we spoke about the media, the interesting thing was, when he starts talking about the media, when he starts talking about his foundation, you notice his rate of speech quickens. Uh -huh. And so there's a big difference there. That's something he wasn't bothered. You know, the interesting thing is, Tanya, and I'll keep this with you for a second. The one time that I noticed real emotion was when he was talking about the media. The media. When he got mad. He got angry, yes. When he got mad. Yeah. That, I, I understand why he shouldn't have done that, yes. but it was refreshing to see at least one point one in which point I could, I could real really emotion. believe him. All right, let's talk about whether and when he returns to golf. He did speak about that, left it a little bit open, but sort of defined the time period in which he wants to come back. Let's play that clip. I do plan to return to golf one day. I just don't know when that day will be. I don't rule out that it will be this year. Well, Rick, <laughs> he is telegraphing it's going <laughs> to be this year, right? I think it will be, but I think it's clearly on the back burner because he's going back to rehab. I do think he's doing the right things. I think he did, you know, once after he had the initial misstep of a, right. of a kind of badly worded press announcement on his website, you know, he sought help for his problem, to identify his problem and get help for it. That's the most important thing. Laura, Golf will come. I don't want to give many wiggle room out of this thing, but, but the fact is he is, in the, he is in the middle or maybe even the beginning stages of this process of, of getting better, of getting himself out of the mess that he got into, right? So we shouldn't be completely saying that this is, this is his only chance to come out, right? Well, absolutely, but I think a lot of the uncertainty, obviously, with the marriage and exactly when he's going to come back right. left a lot of unanswered questions, and that's going to fuel the media and speculation and only going to give him less privacy yeah. with his family and whatnot. All right, finally, and I thought, again... Finally, Tanya, I'm sorry, we're short on time, but I want to show the VO. Let's show the pictures of the, the end of the press conference when right. he was going over and hugging first his mother... Then he was hugging friends. Frankly, talk about woodenness. That whole thing <laughs> seemed like such a setup. I, I don't know why they did that. You know, it's, it's interesting because his mom didn't make eye contact with him the entire time. And I, I wondered, did she know that she was on camera? Because most of the time she sat with her arms folded. Here was the one time, I don't know if you heard it earlier, but you did hear a little sob come from yeah. Tiger yeah. as he went over to hug his mom. So here, this is this is genuine, but the rest of them There's, are a little bit like bizarre. It looked like there was a little eye contact yeah. there at the end there. It was, it was really the woodenness was in reference to the other people right. that he went to. They held that shot much too long. Yes. Do you think he, by the way, do you think he recovers with his sponsors quickly? He doesn't recover quickly, but he recovers eventually. Not everybody. A couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah. He's never going to be what he is now, what he was, but that's okay. He doesn't have to well, be. Well, golf, unlike football and everything, you have a long life right. as a golfer, so he could, you know, come back in 10 years and still make hundreds of millions He'll of dollars. He'll be fine. All right. Rick Cerrone, Tanya Ryman, Laura Reese, good to see you all. Thanks for coming in. Coming up on deck, when Academy Award-winning super producer Peter Goober thinks a new release is a Hollywood...